Are you separated from your husband because you've been here for a very long time in India and there's no news about him? Wow, isn't that intrusive? This is going to be a very interesting video. Hello, my beauties. Welcome back to my channel. We have another honest, truthful YouTuber tag video. The sequel. Now, the prequel was done two years ago, and I know it wasn't a trend that I started. It started in the West, but uh, after my video, it caught on like wildfire in the YouTube community. So many of my contemporaries started doing this video. This is not a trend right now. I just thought of doing a life update video anyway, because I know there's so many questions that has been coming my way for the last uh, seven and a half months since I've been in India. And I just thought this was the best way to just sit one on one and catch up and talk about what I know, what I've been up to. I've been in this industry for the last uh, six and a half years right now. I'm still not uh, part of the OG clan of, you know, Shreya, Joby that's been there for eons, you know, Sherry. Compared to them, I'm relatively new, but I've seen um, the growth. I've seen what YouTube, you know, the transformation that it has gone through, the ups, the downs, the stagnancy in my growth, uh, you know, the dip low. I've seen I've seen it all but I can confidently say that despite of everything I have tried to be as honest and authentic to me uh, my craft as well as to my viewers watching without the growing trends of catching eyeballs uh, you know with the whole clickbaity kind of a thing that happens right now on YouTube I've tried to just be as real as possible and just do my job and get out you know without any drama so let's start because we've got a lot of personal intrusive questions which is just making me already palpitate because two years ago i was a little feisty and right now as a new mom that feistiness has died down because life happened <laughs> now before you jump onto the spicy side of this video i want you to give me exactly five minutes because this portion of the video is in collaboration with one of my favorite brand and that is dr shep now please hear me out before you go like oh my god here we go again no the reason i have collaborated with them is also because when i asked you to send me a lot of questions many of you send me skincare related questions as usual and i'm not going to address all of them because this is a life update video it's a bit of a gossipy video so i would ask you to just get that cup of joe ready before you start off with it because it's going to be fun but the range i'm going to be talking about from dr sheth is their vitamin c range i absolutely love it especially the vitamin c serum their two serums are incredible and they're face wash when it comes to a vitamin c it's a multitasking ingredient that really helps to fade away dark spots you guys know that and why i love this range a lot more because it's a blend of active as well as natural vitamin c i'm talking about vitamin c that is derived from amla as well as they've got ethyl ascorbic acid which is a very stable form of vitamin c that makes it really suitable for all skin types when it comes to dr shed you guys know that it's a family of doctors they you know they are dermatologists that is curating and formulating their products that is why Dr. Sheth has got that brand value. They've been doing this for 90 years, you guys. So let me start off with the first one, and that is the Amla face wash. Now, this is a very beautiful face wash. I got asked a lot of questions during my Q&A round saying that, what about Dr. Sheth's face wash as well as face wash in general? You're looking out for a very gentle face wash that has got vitamin C, turmeric extract. It's got rose hip extract and 2% vitamin C. And you know that turmeric extract is rich in its antioxidants. It's got anti-inflammatory properties. It just fights dullness. Where Whereas Amla and Rose Hip just brightens, leaving your skin very soft and hydrated. When you do a 60 second face wash out here or just leave it on on your skin and then wash it off after around 40 to 60 seconds, you tend to see that it really clears up your skin very, very well. And at the same time, it takes away all that dirt and that gunk that is on your skin. Even in the morning when you wake up, the residue of your previous skincare, it gently takes it off without dehydrating your skin. So I have been loving this face wash so much. Now you guys know that the Amla vitamin C 20% from Dr. Sheth has been my favorite for a very long time. Whenever I keep on suggesting a high concentration vitamin C for people who are used to vitamin C, I always recommend the 20%. This is strong. This is not for the faint of heart. This is not for a beginner. Definitely. If I were you and I was starting with a vitamin C, I would just start it maybe twice a week and gradually build it up after about two, three weeks to every day or alternate days. See how it suits you because like I said, with the vitamin C, you have to take it slow. But it's been formulated so well out here, guys, that it is suitable for all skin types. It's for people who have got really deeply pigmented skin, acne scars that are not fading away, really stubborn marks on the skin, and you're looking out for something really strong to add in a punch to make a difference, to bring about a difference onto the skin. The 
the 20% is the one for you. Now, if you are beginning with a vitamin C and you've always wanted to start off with this brand, then they have come out with 10% and they really took customer feedback into consideration. And I know there were so many people who wanted the 10%, they've come out with a 10% of the same. This is a lot more gentler for beginners. And yes, it's 10% vitamin C. It's also got 0.5% ferulic acid, which is an anti-aging property. It's also got 1% vitamin D, which helps in repairing. And amla extract, which is a collagen booster, but it's also got another antioxidant factor out here and that comes from green spirulina. The same ingredients goes for the 20% as well. These two are very fast acting product and what I mean about it is that you will see a visible difference because it brings about that difference in promoting that collagen synthesis which is very important as you age. You can wash your face with this face wash or any face wash of your choice, follow it up with the serum and of course follow it up with their sunscreen you guys. I have a couple of videos with regards to this. It has come in the best sunscreen video it's come in my monthly favorites there's just no problem in applying a very good vitamin C two times a day but I feel once is more than enough because it's been formulated very well to bring about a difference to your skin the many troublesome factors that Indian skin faces a lot more you guys so that is why you need skincare that has been beautifully formulated and well thought of and this range is absolutely stellar so let's take some repeated questions you know some people had a similar question so that's what I'm going to answer and that is what do you Shreya and Joey talk about when you all meet is there any gossip and are you all really friends in real life or is it just for the gram now I get asked this question a lot because whenever we meet we do some fun things together you must have seen our reels you know we have we did collaborate the last time we met in Chennai we don't meet regularly but we do chat as much as possible uh, we all are very busy in our life and just because Jovita is with me over here in Kerala we get to meet as often uh, which we don't get to do that with Shreya only you know when it comes to special occasions events that we get to meet and we when we meet it is as if there's no time has passed by we just sit and we gossip yes there's a lot of gossip that really happens but it's not just about the industry that we are in uh, we like to talk about things outside of work you know that's what uh, because you know when you keep on talking about work 24 7 that's not friendship that's just catching up to you know what business proposal each one has got what business project each one has signed and that's that's not uh, what the basis of friendship should be and why I love those two a lot more is because I've met a lot of content creators and most of them will make friends with you basis on how many followers that you have uh, for many content creators that I've come across and I'm talking about established ones also and I'm talking about newcomers I've noticed how they will talk to you when they know that it benefits them either it will benefit them through a reel or it will benefit them through a collaborated YouTube video for us the three of us don't even bring the numbers into the picture it is about just compatibility we talk about various other things about family about personal life you know we know about what's we just basically catch up we have known each other for a long time now and our friendships are not about collaboration otherwise that's what Jovi and I would be doing every now and then out here in Kochi but when we get together it's about friendship you know it's not about what can you give me in return or what can I take from you and touch wood I just hope that it continues because it's very rare to find a friendship as real as that in today's world who according to you is the nicest influencer and the fakest now I don't go to too many events I've, I mean as you know that I'm a very private person I've also got um, social anxiety that not many people know about I would say that like my girls are definitely the nicest bunch. I'm talking about Shreya and Jovi. I know that uh, Sarah Sarosh is so incredibly kind and so super sweet. Don't go by. Her persona is larger than life on uh, when you see her on videos as well. You'll feel like, you know, she's very intimidating. And that happens to her and I only because of our height, our personality, the way we talk. We're so loud, you know. We don't even know how to talk in a very soft, subdued version. Uh, we are very loud people. And I guess when they see that they think that we're very aggressive and arrogant but we're far from it you guys she is far from it the way she takes care I I know that most of the content creators that I have met all the girls that I have met the one thing that they do beautifully is take care of their family they for them family is everything but I know how much these girls do I know how much Sarah does for her family and it is just incredible I love that aspect that no matter how much money that these girls are making they are still not forgetting the people that have stuck on with 
with them from the beginning. So I just think that that's something they should beautifully continue. This time I met so many influencers in Delhi and I just felt that all of them uh, are so sweet and very, very humble. Uh, there were a few that I could not resonate with. Now to tell you who's fake, that's something I won't do because being fake and finding someone fake is a very subjective thing. I know many people might find me fake, but the nicest of the lot is also Sherry, you guys, because any time I have required help and it's just not me, I know so many people that she has helped with and she's not someone who will just go on social media and say, I did this for you. She's been in the industry for a very long time. There's nobody who's well connected as Sherry but there is that class that she displays it's not about do you know who I am do you know who my connections are nothing of that sort I like her for example recently YouTube had taken my channel away from me and I was not able to upload and there was a big huge misunderstanding I think uh, you know they did not protect me and I, and I know that Jovita tried to help as much as possible but who really stood up for me was Sherry who really helped and guided me on what to do and how to reclaim my channel back and that is also one of the main reasons that I've not been too active on YouTube because it really broke my heart that one incident but no one else helped me as much as Sherry has and this is not the first time. Why are skin influencers, skin influencers, losing their views and audience and shifting to fashion or vlogs or travels? Well, I guess, um, yeah, I have noticed that. I have definitely noticed that many, my videos and many of my, um, fellow content creators who are in the same field of work are not getting the views as how it was before. And I feel that uh, how much of skincare and how much of beauty products can you talk about? Maybe that's one of the main reason. But I also know for a fact that the reason why brands still want us to do YouTube videos because now Instagram is definitely picking up. But despite the numbers that Instagram has and despite the kind of rage that Instagram has, YouTube is slowly changing and that is why they introduce shorts. So I know that there's a lot more people watching shorts than a long format video and brands still want YouTube video because guys, it stays, um, it stays forever. Now, when you do a reel, for example, it disappears. Can you search anywhere like how to apply skincare, uh, how to apply vitamin C, five ways of applying a lipstick? If you if you type on Google, what's the first thing that will pop up? An article or a video. You're not going, and a video from YouTube. You're not going to get something from Instagram popping up. So I still concentrate on YouTube because I feel that YouTube has got a very intelligent audience. So a YouTube community is very intelligent and they're a buying community. They're there, they're serious. They're serious about knowing whether their product, their skincare, their makeup product is worth the money or not. So vlogs are fun only because I guess it's, it's in our nature to, you know, know, want to know about, you know, your favorite person's life. It's in our nature to, it's like one of those big brother, big boss kind of thing, you know, like, uh, but I'm somewhere in the middle where, you know, I'll share just a little bit what I'm comfortable sharing. So that's why you might see some vlog style videos. I have come to a point in my life and especially after the pandemic, I don't want to put anybody in that position where they feel bad about what they don't have just because they see what I have. That is why I still stick to what I know, or what I'm good at. Sadly, the views are not great, but that is the life cycle of YouTube. You, it goes through its ups, it'll go through its down, it'll go through its up again. So you can't say it's over until the fat lady sings. Is there a mean girl movie situation in content creators? Oh yes, there is. I'm, I'm talking about which field doesn't have that mean girl kind of an attitude. You'll always have that bunch of women who just don't wish you well, who will look at you as if you know, you're know you just dust. Uh, in my field, I can uh, honestly say that there are many who will not even talk to you, not even say hi, unless they know you. And for them to know you, you have to be on that same standing with them, same platform, same numbers, same kind of, uh, you know, um, all that hype and jazz that comes along with it, uh, the fluff that comes along with, you know, uh, social media, then they will be nice to you. And the nice is also very, very fake. It's very superficial. There's nothing deep. There's nothing real. Uh, the moment that you have a downfall, they will cut you off like that. You know, it's, and they will jump from one person to another person, whoever benefits them. And I've seen quite a number of people do that. So there is a mean girl. Uh, kind of a situation that happens. So let's take two questions right now. What do you feel about the woke influencers that has a huge following because of their connection? And is there a mobster kind of a scene when it comes to influencers? Mobster? Uh, 
what are we in Sicily where we have to kiss uh, the ring of a certain person oh uh, that's all such rubbish it doesn't happen in our world uh, this is not the film industry but uh, there is there is a hierarchy that happens so let me break it down for you the woke influencers yes there are a bunch of women who just sits online and who has a lot of opinions about many people and situation and the stigma that our society has and those are woke people online do they do anything on field no they don't it's very easy for all of us to have an opinion and to voice out our opinion behind the mobile behind a laptop it's very easy to pen down a few words and be that advocate of uh, everything good and mighty uh, but what are you doing about it i only respect people those sort of influencers that actually are there on the field doing something about it there are certain woke influencers that will add they are, you know, what is right, what is wrong once in a while. But actually, when you look at it overall, it is just fluff and it's just gossip. It's quite sarcastic and very negative and very bitchy. That kind of selective vocism, if that's a word, is not something I respect. I like a person who will make you think, who will make you, who will leave that question mark and make you think about a certain thing. Whereas it is what's right and wrong, all of us know. But when there is a person who intelligently puts out their side of the story and makes you think about, shit, she's right, actually this is wrong. Uh, those are the kind of people that I like to follow and I engage with. And the people that also do things offline as well, just not online. But there are many people who have got the connection within the industry, fashion, uh, Bollywood, as well as you know within the content creator world. And they feel like, oh my God, I am really important because of the connections I have. So. And they have that verbal diarrhea online they make absolutely no difference their existence makes absolutely no difference they're just fluff now when it comes to hierarchy I'm talking about what you like to call it the mobster the gang the mafia there's no such thing out here but there is a hierarchy for example there is this one person who is very very influential and under that person comes many other content creators that are of really good standing and in terms of numbers, in terms of influence, they are all under this one person. And the kind of power that these six, seven people have is unbelievable. Like especially two of them have got really so much of power to even decide which content creator is going to get work and which one wouldn't. I wouldn't say it's like a mafia mentality, but it's almost like a couple of bullies you know that has uh, misused their power position and I know that the person that is heading most of them is a very powerful person and is a bit of a bully uh, who seems to be like one of those woke person who talks about you know fat phobia when they have fat shamed themselves I know of it I've heard of it I've had so many of my fellow content creator people who also have suffered in silence and you will see that those selective few will always be there for each other praise each other and under that hierarchy you have you know content creators of different sorts that they just promote each other there's no way of getting into it and and if you get into it there's a lot of apple polishing that you have to do to maintain that kind of friendship for me that is too time consuming and mind-boggling what people do to you know be very relevant in this industry why weren't you or Shreya or Jovita invited for cans or winning any awards like Cosmo despite being in the industry for a very long time that's a very good question I wouldn't say that all of us did not get the opportunity most of us got invited most of us got uh, certain opportunities that we turned down only because we felt that it wasn't meshing well with the kind of person that we are with the kind of things that we are doing um, I know Shreya has nominated many times I know Jovi and I have never been nominated nominated before um, and Jovita has also been in the industry for a very long time and we've had this discussion. I feel that apart from the Bombay community and Delhi community, they feel that every other content creators that come from various parts of India doesn't have that significance, uh, that importance when it comes to bringing about a difference. I feel it's a very frog in the well mentality. What is there in the well is only what they will look at. Uh, they do not want to see what's outside of it. And that's a very wrong way of going about with it because there's too many talents out there. I know for a fact that Jovita and I are in the mainstream of content creator world but I know there's so many people out here in Kerala itself who have got you know bigger following than me who has not had the opportunities that I've had despite being small in numbers and I don't know what is the reason that many brands in Bombay and Delhi don't look at this part of the world 
all of South India I'm talking about, even Northeast, you know, so they need to really step up their game. Uh, so I guess the invitation didn't come our way because they are pretending not to know Jovita and I or they are simply, we don't appeal to them. I don't know what it is uh, because you will see that it is the same bunch of people that get nominated again and again and again. So how do you give chance to someone new? Now, when it comes to Cannes Film Festival, I think it is all to do with Laurel. Laurel gets to choose who, you know, is going to represent uh, India for Cannes Film Festival and it's an opportunity of a lifetime. I mean, who wouldn't want to go to Cannes, of course. End of the day, it's the brand that decides who gets to represent them at uh, Cannes. And I like the brand that they're taking new faces as well. It's refreshing for us. It was refreshing to see Tarani over there, you know, walk the red carpet. I was really proud of her. I thought that she did a brilliant job. Why do you content creators keep pushing affiliate codes like a salesperson? as if you are all not making enough. I feel it's a little negative, but I'll address this anyway. Now, when it comes to uh, affiliate codes, there are so many people who have got an affiliate code. The reason, I can't speak for them, I'll speak for myself. The reason I give an affiliate code number one is because I eventually get asked by most of you saying, do you have a code for this brand? Do you have a code for that brand? Because many of y'all don't go to the information bar under the video to check all the affiliate codes. I can just put it out there and that's about it. And every time I disclose an affiliate code, I also mention, if you see all my videos, I've said, buy and use the code of the content creators that you resonate with. It just doesn't have to be with me, but I'm just putting it out there in case you're looking out for a further discount. Now, the last part of the question as if you're not making enough money. Now, making money, when is it enough? When is it? It's never enough. No matter what you do, you will always want to better yourself, better your lifestyle, better the kind of work you put out there, better the kind of salary that you have. That's how it is, whether you're in a corporate job or whether you're in my job. So I feel it's a very negative term when you say, haven't you made enough? No, I've not made enough. I have a child that I have to look at her future. In my late 30s, I became a mother. That was one of my biggest fears that, am I going to live long? Am I going to be healthy enough to take care of my child by the time she goes to college? Will I be healthy enough to even walk, talk, do, you know, do the work, earn? And why I'm not ashamed in my code game is only because, truth be told, when I was uh, undergoing my IVF treatment, I had exactly 10,000 rupees in my account. I was going through so many problems, personal problems with my husband that um, I had a very limited amount to, to survive on. I lost my identity there. And that happens to a lot of women who suddenly become financially dependent on their partner. And when I came here during my IVF and I went through that lack of financial independence, I made a promise to myself that I will do whatever it takes to not put me in that position I was a few years ago. But whatever I make, I save it for my daughter. Everything that I make is only for Nirvana because of my constant fear whether there's going to be a tomorrow for me. The life that I have right now, what I'm able to enjoy, how I'm able to travel, buy something nice for me save enough for my daughter has only happened because of all of you because of YouTube because of these codes because of people using my code my affiliate links or for example brands coming to me it's only happened because of that the kind of financial independence that I've had I have to be grateful to all of you for putting me in this position so is there any shame in my game no because when I think of I do I feel bad yes I do for my daughter I will do as much as possible to earn and in other ways also you guys I am a mother first and I also know that there's a shelf life in this YouTube community and I will do as much as possible to reap the benefits of it as long as I'm here so I hope once and for all it answered your question do you feel jealous when you see new influencers who started recently getting more famous than you it's not jealousy like I told you um, do I feel bad about uh, the stagnancy in my growth yes I do who doesn't feel bad I am human I feel like Okay, maybe my time has come. Maybe it's time for me to just concentrate on Instagram and leave YouTube altogether. There's no jealousy. I just feel bad when I know that the kind of perks, like for example, when I told you when my YouTube channel was affected very badly, I did not get the help that I should have got from uh, you know the people heading YouTube considering that I've been in this industry for a very long time and I've played it safe out here they should have had my back and they did not and your honest opinion on Gen Z influencers who use their age as their titles and show off about the things they buy I understand where you're coming from the whole new Gen Z do put their age in their title and I just feel it's a very personal choice it's not something that uh, do I have a problem with it no I don't because 
it's up to you whether you want to watch it or not for them they know that if they put at a certain age i have achieved so much you will watch the video you're curious to know what have you achieved i want to see how big your house is i want to see what fancy car you have uh, and there's so many people out there who are of the same age group some slot of those people might think of it as uh, a motivation to work harder and there are many others who would feel bad about it so whatever that you're going through whatever the problem whether it's formal or whether you're motivated and you're inspired you will still watch and that's what the gen z has um i think they have captured that essence that they know that if they put a certain thing uh you know put it in the title like this is what i've done at this age and this is what i have achieved at this age you will tend to watch it and i think it is all for eyeballs and they don't it's not intentionally done to hurt anybody watching but is this something that i would do i have never done that i will never do that and our age group is also different even if i was in that age group i wouldn't disclose it and i wouldn't put this as a clickbait title only because that's the way i am does that make the other person a bad person no guys it's all about survival out here it's the survival of the fittest you have to do what it takes to make sure that you survive in this industry it's too competitive so if they want to do something that's going to garner traffic into their page then they will do what it takes now it is up to you whether you want to watch it or not watch it you can't be one of those people who will watch it who will watch the entire thing get irritated pass a comment saying that shame on you then again go back to the video and watch it all together you need to unfollow and take that drama out of your life you live carefree and let live I'm the sort of person I know my peers of the same I'm talking about uh, the time frame that we have been in this industry we do not like to put such titles only because especially like I mentioned even in the beginning of the channel because of the pandemic I'm feeling really bad I feel bad to even show what I have bought I you know there's not too many hauls that I do if you notice because I don't know the struggle of another person who has lost their job who is not able to get a job who's not able to get that education who's not able to pay their fees who's not able to pay their rent uh, Uh, you know who's not able to buy the basic necessities because they're really struggling who's not able to buy a gift for their mother for their father because money is really they're tight on finance so when they see videos like that i don't want that negativity to brood from their side and on my side towards me for them you know i don't want that because i don't want someone looking at my video and be like damn what a life she's got that itself is kind it, it sends off a certain energy second of all uh i don't want that person to think that what they have is not enough uh if you wake up in the morning and you've got your health intact you've got your loved ones around you whose health is intact trust me that's the biggest blessing you don't need a car you don't need a fancy house you don't need a fancy designer bag nothing those are your blessings but we tend to forget those blessings when we see other people buying that latest bag especially at the age group that they're in and i know in my 20s I wanted so much I wanted to achieve a lot and I used to feel bad when I used to see people you know living the high life I wanted that but there are some people in sort of inspiration they take it as demotivation and that's the negative side of all this so I personally wouldn't put a title of that sort even if I was their age but do I hate them for it no I don't like I said survival of the fittest and they're doing that to garner eyeballs they're getting it it's up to you whether you want to feed it or not so you've been here for a very long time and we don't get to see your husband is everything okay with your marriage what is happening uh there were a couple of questions with regards to my marriage which i feel is very intrusive and personal and frankly none of your business it's just that my work picked up really well out here and for the first time in my 8 years of marriage i have finally decided to think about myself and my career I have I left everything and went to London uh so that my husband's career can be really set and I was there for him uh you know he didn't have to shift bases and that's what happens to a lot of us women we shift our base we uh say goodbye to our family our friends our work for our husbands this is just his way of giving me the space have we had problems in the last 7 months because of distance yes a lot of problems nothing was running smoothly uh you know i'm not painting a rosy picture out here saying that he's there for me and you know uh, he tells me like go go for your dreams i'll always be there no it's never like that no marriage is ever that rosy we have had our ups and downs we have had our fights we've had so many miscommunications and misunderstanding but it's all about 
uh, doing something which will definitely bring about a fabulous future for our child because he knows that I also have a shelf life in this career. Uh, if I start a brand after this, if I start something of my own after this, that's a different calling altogether. But right now I've got a couple of years over here to just make maximum money and he understands that. The time that I have been here, I've established myself so well, uh, you know, luckily I've worked with the best of the best and I've established myself so well that even if I go to the UK, I know that they will want to keep working with me and they would want to send their products to me and continue the work association. So I can now confidently go. The last question is, what is the biggest advice you can give new content creators who are starting their career? There's so many videos out there that uh, preaches what to do, what not to do. But if there's one advice I can tell people is that I know right now is the trend to lend your voice to certain reels. When you make videos, you can see there's a lot of voiceover videos in the sense uh, you won't see people, very rarely you will see now, people sitting in front of the camera and talking when they do short form videos, be it shorts or be it reels, which works really well. But if you are starting off with content creating, uh, just make sure that you balance it out. Do few that you can lend a voiceover and do few that you can stand in front of the camera, look into the camera and talk. You know, you're always reading off a script and you're like you know doing a voiceover bit that you tend to forget to connect to the camera and just speak your mind and for me for a person like me who has done this many years and who has done so many reviews even when I go to the sets to collaborate with a brand I get tongue-tied so imagine someone who's only done voiceover who is not connected to the camera has not spoken her mind uh, then and there that presence of mind to speak then and there about a certain product will find it very difficult because what can happen to people who just do voiceover is that when they go on the set it will you'll freeze completely and then you have to look at the teleprompter and give out your script you know which you can definitely see your eyes move like that you know which you really don't want another most important factor is try to disconnect once in a while you don't need the camera on 24 7 I know you want to capture each and every moment uh, especially if you're a vlogger more than a beauty content creator you're missing out on the moments when you're traveling when you're going for an event enjoy the event by spending time finish the event and try to enjoy don't have to spend till morning till night you know thinking let's collaborate let's do this reel let's do that let's you know it's not required i know you're trying to make hey while the sun shines you're trying to make the most of it but at the same time sometimes once in a while when you travel when you go to a restaurant or when you're meeting friends you can just disconnect and just 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 be because trust me, when you get into that late 30s, 40s phase and you look back at your life, you're going to be like, man, I took things too seriously. Yeah? I should have lived a little bit more. So that's about it, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching this honest YouTuber tag. Well, I can't say it's an honest, truthful YouTuber tag because I feel the previous one was a lot more spicier. This is more of a life update. I hope you enjoyed this. Please don't forget to try out the Dr. Shared products because they are incredible. So I love you very much. I shall see you in my next and until later. Bye for now.